After years of denials from both Washington and Kiev, the CIA and Ukraine's intelligence services now admit to the extensive ties that exist between them. Even the U.S. media is now admitting it, including the Washington Post. For more on that, we're going to Moscow to speak with analyst Mark Sloboda. Mark, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Don, thanks for having me. There's uh, some interesting stuff to discuss about what's going on in Ukraine while the rest of the world waits for World War III to break out there, or uh, let's see, it could also be in Israel, Palestine. Let's start with what they're doing with the uh, Orthodox Church in Ukraine. I'm going to reference today two Washington Post articles, you know, the D.C. uh, establishment, the blobs paper of record. And uh, neither of this is really new information. Uh, But the fact, I guess, that the Washington Post is finally covering it in some degree, even with their own narrative spin on it, means that it becomes harder to deny the reality. And the the first one is uh, an article, uh, Ukrainian lawmakers move to ban Russian-linked church uh, in Ukraine. Uh, and, And by Russian linked church, they're talking about historical ecclesiastical ties. So, what they're talking about is the very real uh, pogrom against the largest church in Ukraine, a Christian Orthodox Church, the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. Um, historically, the Ukrainian Orthodox Church is ecclesiastically, like in terms of religious matters of record, um, tied uh, to the Moscow Patriarchate. But uh, in the last decade, the Ukrainian Orthodox Church has officially severed those ties, not that they really amounted to much. And what's more, the Ukrainian Orthodox Church officially uh, condemned the Russian intervention in the Ukrainian civil conflict, spoke against it, blah, blah, blah. But that isn't good enough right. for Kiev. The The Zelensky regime, the Maidan regime, doubts the absolute political loyalty that they demand from this church. And their hatred of anything Russia, including 20% at the very least of their own population uh, uh, leads them down this path. Now, already some 60, according to the Washington Post, right, the numbers are, are probably larger. But according to the Washington Post, some 62 priests have been arrested charged with treason and collaboration. Um, uh, Most of that is due to the fact that some of their literature is still in the Russian language, which was until 2014, at least, and still in most cases, the most widely spoken uh, language, uh, and and certainly for um, uh, uh, literature in the country. Now, Um, The head of the church and numerous others uh, have been arrested in this regard. You know, the the patriarch of the church uh, was confined to house arrest while his trial was consuming, made to wear an ankle bracelet. You know, freedom of religion? Ah, what's that? Right. Freedom of religion, except when it comes to Russian linked churches. I mean, that's like calling the roman catholic church an italian linked church it's it's uh, you know it's right. really absurd um and it is uh you know uh racist prejudicial and it certainly has nothing to do with the values that the u.s and europe uh supposedly uphold now they go even further because these churches there's a very real pogrom i mean churches have been seized um the a few years ago the kiev regime um uh they while under the oligarch, the candy oligarch Poroshenko, they manufactured their own absolutely politically loyal uh, Orthodox Church, not 
the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, but this is the Orthodox Church of Ukraine, completely different acronym, right? Um, and this one is politically loyal. So they're, what they're doing is they are violently seizing churches from the Ukrainian Orthodox Church and handing them over to the Orthodox Church of Ukraine, dragging priests out in the middle of their masses, beating the parishioners, forcing them out, uh, conducting military style raids of churches, looking for um, blasphemous contraband like um, uh, religious documents still in the Russian language uh, uh, and so forth. Um, so uh, they're, they're, this pogrom is, is continuing. It's happening all the time. It's something it's very, very rarely, uh, if ever, reported by the Western media. And it's usually when it is, it's usually brushed away and excused as well. But it's Russian linked. Um, you you so, know what's what's ridiculous about this? I just want to interject something yeah. here, something I know something about, as a matter of fact. You know that what they call the East-West Schism, when the church basically split along the lines of the Roman Empire, which had been split between East and West a yes. few centuries earlier, but between the Roman Catholic and the Orthodox churches in 1054, I think it was. Um, that the, the the Russian church had already become a part of the church for, for a century and change. The Russian Orthodox Church, at, at, and it was founded, by the way, Russia became Christian with Prince Vladimir, who was seated in Kiev, or, or as close to Kiev as, as existed at the time. So in other words, for, for Kiev to kick the Russian church out and set up a new church not only runs against the tradition of, of the Christian church, before the schism, but also against the part of the church that was the, you know, the, the remaining part for, for, for the Orthodox, for the East, um, which, which is the Russian Orthodox Church. It's crazy. Yes. It is. It is. Uh, it goes against their own history and culture. But, I mean, that's that's what the Maidan project for the construction of the exactly. new Banderite Ukraine is all about. And, of course, it goes even further because for the construction of this new um, Orthodox Church of Ukraine, politically loyal to the Maidan regime, the the uh, patriarch, the schismatic patriarchs of the church, Filaret, he presented – the associate director of uh, CIA, Jack Devine, with the church's highest decoration, the Order of St. Andrew, for the support for Ukraine's independence and the creation of the unified autocephalous Ukrainian Orthodox Church. So, so this, is the first, this is the first Church of Jesus Christ, comma, CIA agent. CIA, <laughs> yeah. So, I, I mean, it goes even further. 20 priests of the russian linked uh, ukrainian orthodox church have been had their ukrainian citizenship removed because they're not loyal enough to the new maidan regime which is you know again you know political freedom religious freedom you know human rights uh, out the window um this is Ten this cardinal is what the solicitor yeah. right right 10 cardinal minzentis <laughs> yes. so um and I, I think connected to that is another um, article uh, in the Washington Post. Ukrainian spies with deep t ties to the CIA wage a shadow war against Russia. And basically it goes into a great detail about what we already know about how uh, in the last 10 years, the CIA has moved into Ukraine. They have essentially taken over and according to the Washington Post, rebuilt from uh, scratch, from ground up, the Ukrainian military intelligence agency, the GUR, right? Totally not the GRU. Um, and the um, they have also within the main intelligence body, the SBU, they have um, uh, created a whole new directorate just for collaboration for CIA projects. And in fact, they created another one recently for the British MI6 as well. And they go to great detail about how everything is funded by the CIA. You know, they have their own offices in the buildings. They paid for the new buildings to be built. They uh, even paid for um, uh, uniforms uh, uh, for, uh, you know, um, the uh, Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republic 
for the uh, Ukrainian intelligence agents to masquerade during the assassinations. And they go into how uh, dozens, if not hundreds, of Ukrainian citizens have been assassinated uh, under the collaboration with the U.S. Um, uh, for collaboration. Uh, and that this is a, a type of, you know, you could say summary executions. And it goes even further and it talks about how um, the uh, under, you know, facilitated by the U.S., you know, with all of this money, all of this help, the U, uh, Ukrainian intelligence agency have started assassinating Russian civilians. Daria Dugan, the daughter of the Russian philosopher uh, and uh, political scientist Alexander Dugan, she herself was on the Miratvorets Kiev regime's kill list. Why? Because they were civil Russian civilians who supported the Russian intervention in the Ukrainian civil conflict. So the Washington Post is like, eh, well, they kind of deserved it because they're against our proxy regime in right. Ukraine, even though they're civilians, which is the definition of political terror. Also, yeah. the blogger Vladen Tatarsky and the, the regime in Kiev denied them these uh, assassinations originally, but the Western media, through Western officials through the Washington Post and the New York Times have quietly since come forward and said, yeah, yeah, they kind of did it. Yeah, we did it. Yeah, so, well, I don't think anyone is surprised that's been paying attention. Mark, appreciate your time and uh, wish we had a lot more, as always. Uh, and we'll speak with you again next week. Thanks for having me. For KPFK, I'm Don DeBar.